This is lesson number two of Pre-Calculus with Limits by Ron Larson. We're on chapter one, section one still, breaking down um, a review of lines of points in a plane. Again, I talked about yesterday making some flashcards. So here's a list of all the formulas that are great for flashcards. On the first one here, general form, A, B, and C are integers. And usually A is not supposed to be negative. So you're just supposed to rearrange the letters into um, X, Y, and the constant on the left equals zero on the right, and multiply across by a number to get rid of and clear the fractions or any decimals away. Number one, finance. The median player's salary for the Dallas Cowboys was $348,000 in 2004 and $555,000 in 2013. Write a linear equation giving the median salary Y in terms of the year X and then use the equation to predict the median salary in 2013. So going back to yesterday or the last lesson here, the first step is to figure out your points and the slope. So it said that the money was a Y and that the years they wanted us to make X. So that's a Y and that's an X. So this is one pair of coordinate points. So I'm gonna knock off the 20 that's on the front of it, which you can do. And technically we could knock the zeros off the end of the money too. I'm just gonna leave them though this time. So for the fourth year, year four, they're making $348,000. And then um, for the 13th year, they were making 555000 So the slope, the change in Y, over the change in X, if you did that math on your calculator, you're going to get 23000 And then, just like yesterday, so we've got a slope, we got a point. I'm going to use this first point. You could also use the second point you would arrive at the same answer that I'm about to with either one of them. So here's your point, here's your slope. So plugging it in here on the step two, again, I like to use the point slope formula for my next step. Lots of other ways to find the equation of a line. This is just my favorite way to do it. So it's y minus the y, 348,000, equals the slope, which was 23,000, and then times x minus the x, which is 4. All right, now if you wanted to, you could clean that up and put it in the slope-intercept form, but they didn't say they wanted to, they said they wanted a linear equation, so technically I've got my linear equation right here. I could argue with someone. But if they did want to know what the median salary was in 2019, remember 2019, that's a year, and we made those x, so that means we want to plug in the number 19 for x which makes then y minus 348,000 equals 23,000 times x, which is 19 minus 4. So you're going to want to go 23,000 times 19 minus 4, which is 15. So 23,000 times 15, and then move that minus 348,000 over. So it's plus 348,000. And so that gives you then 693,000. So there's one answer and up here is the other answer because they said they wanted the equation. There's the equation. All right, down below it says, finding the slope intercept form. In exercises 49 and 50, use the slope intercept form of the equation. Oh, find the slope intercept form of the equation of the line below. All right, so y equals mx plus b. So we need the slope and we need the y-intercept. So you could do it just the way we did it up above too, um, but technically they did give us the y-intercept here, which was one, we could argue. So all we really need to do is find the slope. So the slope, change in y over the change in x. So change in y, three over two minus negative one, which makes plus one, and then negative one minus four. So you get negative five on the bottom, and one plus three over two, 
That's the same thing as 2 over 2. So it gives you 5 over 2 divided by negative 5. So when you do that, you get negative 1 half. So then plugging it all together then, you would have um, y equals m, which is negative 1 half x, and then plus b, and b was 1. So y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. Again, looking back over this page, we have formulas to know. So if you haven't made flashcards on those formulas, you might want to do that. The next page. Find the slope-intercept form. Write an equation of the line that passes through the point. Use the slope-intercept form if possible. If not possible, explain why and use the general form. Use a graphing utility to graph the line if possible. All right, so again, on step one here, I like to find the slope. So change in the y over the change in x. So 6 minus 6 over 5 minus negative 1, which gives you 0 over 6, or 0. So you have a horizontal line. Any slope with a 0 slope is a horizontal line. Undefined makes a vertical line. The y was always 6. Honestly, we're done. y is 6. If you ever see the same number listed twice like that on the SAT or ACT, please don't take the time to find the slope. Just write that line. 6. y is 6. Okay, on the next one, 58. Again, got to find the slope. Step one. So y, 3 over 2 minus 7 over 4. And then on the bottom, 3 fourths minus negative 5 4 thirds makes plus 4 thirds. And I am going to use the calculator. Remember to use um, parentheses around the top and the bottom. So on the top, we have 3 over 2 minus 7 fourths divided by 3 divided by 4 plus 4 thirds and then I'm going to hit math enter enter and it gives me negative 3 25ths for the slope alright so I'm going to use that slope of negative 3 25ths and you can use either point I'll just use the first point and again on step two, for my step two, I plug it into the point slope formula. Got to plug in the point, plug in the slope. I'm going to use the first point. Again, you could use the second point. So y minus 3 over 2 equals m, which is negative 3 25ths, times x minus x, which is 3 fourths. Okay, so I'm going to distribute the negative 3 25ths across it. So negative 3 25ths x, and then plus 9 over 100. 3 times 3 is 9, 25 times 400. Then they said they wanted you to put it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to move the minus 3 over 2 over here to plus 3 over 2. So y equals negative 3 25ths x, and then 3 over 2 plus 9 over 100. And then hit math, enter, enter, and you get 159 over 100. I, you could have made it a decimal. It wouldn't have mattered. You could have wrote 1.59 since it was a terminating decimal. If it wasn't a terminating decimal, you would need to make it a fraction. Don't ever round anything if you don't have to. Well, the next one, it says equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. Write the slope-intercept forms of the lines of the equations through the given point. All right, they'd like to have it A, parallel to it, which, remember, is the same slope, and B, they'd like it perpendicular to it, which, remember, is a negative reciprocal. So it's going to go through this point, and it's going to be A, parallel, and then B, perpendicular. So we need to get the slope off of that. So solving it for Y y equals negative x plus 7, so the slope is negative 1. So doing letter A here, we're going through the point negative 3, 2, parallel to this line, so it has the same slope, negative 1. So y minus 2 equals that slope, negative 1, times x minus negative 3, so x plus 3. 
So it gives us y equals negative x minus 1. And then on b, same thing, you're going to go through the same point, negative 3, 2. This time you want it perpendicular, so you're going to flip over negative 1 over 1, which is still 1, but now it's positive 1. So using that point-slope formula again, y minus y, so y minus 2 equals that slope of 1 times x plus 3. Distribute the 1 across it, and then move over the minus 3 to plus 3. So it gives you y equals x plus 5 for the final answer. Seventy-six, it's the same question. You're going to maybe want to draw a picture with this one. So they gave you the one line is x equals 5. So x equals 5 means it goes through the number 5. So that makes a vertical line through the number 5 on the x-axis. So letter A, they wanted one parallel to it. So parallel to it, going through the point negative 2, 4. So parallel to it through the point negative 2, 4 is going to be x equals negative 2. And then they'd like to have it on part B perpendicular to it. So perpendicular to it through that point negative 2, 4, it's going through the number 4 on the y-axis, so that makes it y equals 4. Equations of parallel lines. In exercises 77 and 78, the lines are parallel. Find the slope-intercept form of the line of the equation of line y2. So we got line y1. It has a slope of negative 2. We want it parallel, the new line here, and it's parallel to it. We want it parallel to it so it's going to have the same slope of negative 2. But it's got a new y-intercept, and they gave it to us right there. The y-intercept of the new line is negative 1. So using y equals mx plus b, y is equal to that slope of negative 2x, and then b, which is minus 1. Equations of perpendicular lines. In exercises 79 and 80, the lines are perpendicular. Find the slope-intercept form of the equation of line y2. Alright, so line 1 has a slope of 3, so perpendicular to it, the new slope is going to be negative 1 third because it's a negative reciprocal of it. And they gave us the y-intercept again, they're just making life too easy for us. Note though they're counting by 2's and not 1, so 2, 4, so it's going through the number 4. So the new equation is y equals negative 1 third x plus 4. Plug it in, into that formula, y equals mx plus b. We've got m, we've got the b, so we're all done with it. Okay, the last one's going to take us a little bit of time. Number 88, we have modeling data. Modeling, by the way, if you haven't figured it out, is a new common core like um, word that they've made up for story problems. So instead of saying we're doing a story problem, we say we're doing modeling. So it kind of hides the fact you're doing a story problem. Modeling data. The table shows the profits Y in millions of dollars for Buffalo Wild Wings for each year X from 2007 through 2013 where x equals 7 represents 2007. So we got year 7, they have profits in 19.7, and it says that those profits were in, let me see, the millions. So they made $19.7 million in profits. And then in 2013, they made $71.6 million of dollars in profit. All right, they want us to sketch a graph of the data. So I have, for us, a piece of graph paper here because we really are going to need it. So I am going to count by ones down here. So here's one and then two. And we could have spread it out more. If you're doing a really good job, your graph is supposed to cover the whole way from left to right. So we probably should have maybe counted by halves. And then going up, I think I'll just count by tens. We probably, yeah, tens. So we got 10, 20.
All right, so we got year seven. It is 19.7. Year eight was 24.4. And the year nine was 30.7. And then we got year 10. Year 10 is 38.4. And then year 11 is 50. So it really shot up, shot up there. And year 12, 57. And then year 13 is 71. So thinking about it here, if you subtracted all of these, it'd probably help to find the common difference between them, which would tell you, because they all increase by one. So whatever number they are that are different each and every time is going to tell you which one increased the most from one year to the next year, since we're just dividing it by the number one. Oh, there's my calculator. All right. So doing that, because we're going to need that for the next question. We got 24.4 minus 19.7. So 4.7, then So now you're glad that I work most of this stuff out ahead of time so you don't have to wait on me. Oh, look, I lost my calculator. So sad. I'll have to do it by hand. All right, so 71.6 minus 57.3. So that was 14.3. So the largest profit, change in profit, happened between 2012 and 2013. So this would be the highest profit. So down below here, so there's our graph of it. And you could see, like I said, that has the steepest graph and that had the lowest graph down here. They wanted to know on the next question, use the slopes to determine the years in which the profits were the greatest. Well, the greatest, like I said, was from 2012 to 2013. And which one was the least? Well, the least was back here from 2007 to 2008. And you could have used the slope on it, the change in the y over the change in x. So the change in the y is the profit divided by the year. But like I said, all the years change by 1, so it kind of make it, makes it negligible to use the slope. All you have to do is find the change in y. Next one it says on C, find the equation of the line between 2007 and 2013. So 2007 to 2013. So I am at going to do, first of all, the change in y on top of it here for letter C. you got to find the slope first, so the change in the y over the change in x. So the change in y is 71.6 minus 19.7, and then over the change in years, 13 minus 7. And that would give you the slope, and then take one of those two points and plug it into that point-slope formula and you'll have your equation of the line. All right, and then just maybe to cover letter D, it wants you to interpret slope. I, I do want to cover that. To interpret slope, whenever they ask you that, the easiest thing to do is write out what words they had for the change in Y and the change in X. Here, Y was X, so they're talking about profits divided by X, which are years, so profit per year. So slope's about the money per year. So just break it down to what the slope is, and that's all you have to do to explain what they mean when they talk about interpreting the slope. All right, see you for lesson three.